Good morning and welcome to our online worship service at Elliott Church of Newton. And the three of us, Elizabeth and Monique and I, greet you in the spirit of Christ, which is most, most needful uh, in another week in this uh, poor old planet of ours and in the United States of America. Uh, we gather in this month of September, the month when the leaves turn red and gold and when the days get shorter and the nights cooler. Um, and so we gather though to hear the word of God, which brings us the light we need to take from it wisdom and comfort and strength for this most amazing day. Let us worship God. There is a longing in our hearts, O oh Lord, for you to reveal yourself to us. There is a longing in our hearts for love we only find in you, O oh God. For justice. Please join us in the call to worship. Source of grace and peace, you call us into being. You keep us in safety. You hold us in life. Be with us now. Bring us into your presence. Enter into our prayer and our praise that our worship may be pleasing to you. And here now the hymn uh, is played by Monique and you can join along on the first two verses which are printed in your bulletin. as the three of us uh, offer you uh, the responsorial psalm, which comes from Psalm 130. My soul is for God. Out of the depths I cry to you, O God. O oh God, hear my voice. 
Let your ears be attentive to the voice of my supplication. If you, O God, should mark inequities, who could stand? My soul needs my God. But there is forgiveness with you, so that you may be revered. I wait for God, my soul waits, and in God's word I hope. My soul waits for God more than those who wait for the morning, more than those who watch for the morning. O Israel, hope in God, for with God there is steadfast love, with God is great power to redeem. It is God who will redeem Israel from all its iniquities. My soul needs for God. Now, if you will, please pause the video and listen to the anthem our choir offers this morning. The first of our two scripture lessons this morning is taken from the prophet Isaiah in the 40th chapter. A voice says, cry out. And I said, what shall I cry? All people are grass. Their constancy is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades when the breath of the Lord blows upon it. Surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. And from the New Testament, from the Gospel of Matthew uh, in the sixth chapter. Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food? and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? And can any of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your span of life? And why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin, yet I tell you, even Solomon, in all his glory, was not clothed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which is alive today and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? Therefore, do not worry, saying, what will we eat or what will we drink or what will we wear? For it is the Gentiles who strive for all these things, and indeed your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But strive first for the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. So do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will bring worries of its own. Today's trouble is enough for today. Here ends the reading of this morning's scripture lessons. Amen. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be always acceptable to you, O Lord. We are a people in the midst of waiting, waiting for a COVID-19 vaccine, waiting for the fires in the West to burn out, waiting for the next hurricane to make landfall, waiting for the election waiting for racial and environmental justice. And if that isn't enough, our individual lives are on hold too. We wait to hug our grandchildren. We wait for our kids to go back to school. We wait for symphony hall theaters and the church sanctuary to open safely. We wait for a return to normal. The explosion of waiting not only happens around us, but in us. Our bodies, as well as our souls, feel the weight of the dread in which we live. 
The Washington Post reported last weekend that dentists are treating an astronomical increase in nighttime teeth grinding due to the stress, anxiety, and depression we carry in our bodies. We are in good company. Our biblical ancestors ground their teeth too. The phrase, and there will be weeping and great gnashing of teeth, appears five times in the New Testament alone. As we wait and wait and wait some more, I find myself constantly remembering a truth my dad has shared with me over the years. Quote, you can hang by your fingernails for as long as you have to as long as you know when you can let go. It becomes difficult only if you don't know when you can let go." End quote. Pretty much sums up where we are, doesn't it? Waiting has us all hanging by our fingernails indefinitely. It is excruciating. I don't know about you, but while I am hanging by my fingernails, I am also weeping and gnashing my teeth. For many of us, waiting for this duration of time is unfamiliar. In a first world, 21st century nation, waiting is not something we are used to experiencing. After all, Strawberries are available year-round in our grocery stores, even though their growing season is over in the Northeast as the summer ends. Amazon delivers most of the things we need and want the next day. We haven't had to wait very often. The spiritual and emotional pain of our waiting can make us feel unfamiliar to ourselves. It is disorienting and overwhelming. No wonder we gnash our teeth. The scripture passage that Rick just read tells us that we are like the grass that will wither away while God will endure. That worry will add not even an hour to our lives. That God knows what we need and cautions us, today's troubles are enough for the day. Yep, and then some. But somehow these words aren't sufficient, no matter how much truth is in them. Do they teach us what we are to do in this prolonged experience of waiting that has been forced upon us? This morning's psalm gives us a clue. I wait for God, my soul waits, and in God's word, I hope. Hope. The biblical stories show us that hope is a verb, not a noun. The people of God had plenty of reasons to despair. Slavery in Egypt, wandering in the desert, exile in Babylon, and a host of unanticipated disasters and tragedies along the way. There was never a moment when salvation was complete. Life was a constant struggle, or as my dad puts it, quote, there is no rest for the weary, end quote. In her book, Scarred by Struggle, Transformed by Hope, Benedictine nun Joan Chichester writes, quote, there is a deep down bone weariness that comes with struggle. The sheer weight of going on, knowing that nothing we can do will change things as they are, that there is no going back to what was, exhausts the timber of the soul. We want to give up. We want to quit. 
end quote. There were plenty of times in the biblical stories when quitting seemed to be the only choice. The baby boys of the Hebrews killed by the Egyptians, Moses smashing the tablets as a result of the people's idolatry, the destruction of Jerusalem and exile from the temple, the crucifixion. And yet, Moses' mother's sister and Pharaoh's daughter conspired to save him, and he lives. He goes back up Mount Sinai and again brings back the tablets of the law. The exiles return to Jerusalem. The temple is rebuilt. Jesus rises from the dead. Hope requires the active choice to endure. Sister Joan points out that there are instructions for living hope in all of the biblical stories. Quote, we see that our creating God goes on creating whatever the apparent failures of the process and asks the same of us. When we refuse to give up, either on ourselves or on the world around us, we become our own small sign that God is. That in the end, right will prevail. Hope is not a denial of reality, but it is also not some kind of spiritual elixir. Hope is a series of small actions that transform darkness into light. It is putting one foot in front of the other when we can find no reason to do so at all, end quote. It is hard to keep putting one foot in front of the other, especially while hanging by our fingernails, weeping and gnashing our teeth. But that is what God asks us to do. Each bag of food we collect for the Center Street Food Bank. Each time we venture out in our masks and patiently wait in a line spread six feet apart. Each online Zoom session we help another navigate, every time we laugh at a child's joke, every budget we plan, every call to our elders, every plan we make to vote. Each of these, and so many more, are small actions of hope that transform us and the world around us. Sister Joan ends her book with these words. Quote, we think of hope as grounded in the future. That's wrong. Hope is fulfilled in the future, but it depends on our ability to remember that we, like our ancestors in faith, have survived everything in life to this point. Why not this latest situation too? Then we hope because we have no reason not to hope. Hope is what sits by a window and waits for one more dawn, despite the fact that there isn't an ounce of proof in tonight's black, black sky that it can possibly come." End quote. Let us continue our small actions of hope as we wait together for the dawn. Amen. Now would you please join Monique in singing verses 3 and 4 of our hymn for this morning.
you now to join us in the spirit of prayer and to lift up uh, first uh, the names of those uh, for whom you ask a special blessing today and we want to include in in that number uh, Brenda and David and Gail Elizabeth's mom and Paul Elizabeth's uncle um, and let us do so with the help of this musical um, prayer time. Um. God, the seasons pass, uh, but not COVID, it seems, not yet. The Sabbaths pass, Creator God, and we return to worship you today. We reach out to you, O oh God. We reach in for you. We reach up, O oh God, and also over the rainbow even for you. We have been forced apart from our communities of faith, and yet at the same time closer to our families. Somehow we can still feel alone and in greater need than ever for your presence, which is why we gather even in this physically distanced way. Today, O oh God, we especially ask your blessing upon the family and the nation of Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Bless to us the memory of her professional balance. Bless to us the memory of her vocation as standard bearer for those the Constitution did not name. Help us to remember ever going forward our tremendous indebtedness to her grace and her presence. Oh God, in this last week, there are still no silver linings to be found among such losses as the people have suffered who have lost homes to fires or lost homes to floods. Remind us this day that in your kingdom, what is emptied is made full again by some miraculous means of yours. Let us abide every day and moment in this hope, which is real, and which Jesus passed to us through his ministry, his words, and his death and resurrection, and who taught us to pray this way.
members of this community, I urge you to exercise the mouse on your desk uh, and to uh, click on the offering button at this point. Uh, your church is faithfully dispersing funds that you have given to, um, to the congregate, to the church, uh, on behalf of people in need. Our fearless leaders in the Mission and Social Justice Commission have continued to uh, reach out with these funds to uh, organizations in need, and you can read about them in this week at, at Elliott Church. Um, so please, please be generous. Uh, the world is in such uh, great need, and the immediate communities around us and, uh, and, and our own uh, do too. Um, and now I'm going to exercise the prerogative of the liturgist to um, go straight to the benediction by Dr. Elizabeth. Dear ones, be of good courage. Hold fast to that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honor all people. Love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Go in peace and live love with hope. Amen. <laughs>